Thank you for joining us here at Open Door Baptist Church. It is our goal to lead people through the open door of salvation, strength, and service. We are praying that through this broadcast, your life will be changed. You can connect with us by going to connect.odbc-church.com and let us know how God used this message in your life. Hey folks, Pastor Dennis Schaefer from Open Door Baptist Church. Thank you so much for connecting with us online. So many people have had to do this since coronavirus, and I'm excited to be able to connect with you this way, and just wanna invite you and welcome you to this online broadcast from Open Door Baptist Church. And by the way, I wanna invite you to come to our services as well. Many of you already have, and many of you continue to watch online too. And we've just been excited to see how God has been working during this time of COVID. And so many people have been home. Schools have been trying to get back into play. Uh, and the students are excited about going back to classes and things there. But uh, there's so much that's going on, and we need to be praying for each other. But I do appreciate you taking this time uh, to be a part of what God is doing right now. And I hope that our study will be an encouragement to you. In just a few moments, uh, we'll be going over this study, stretch number five. We're in a series right now called Stretch Surviving the strenuous, and if coronavirus has taught us one thing is that in the midst of all that's going on, there can be some strenuous times. So uh, there are some pressures that people have, and one of those that has been noted is finances. So we're gonna be looking at stretch number five, surviving a financial crunch. So I wanna encourage you to uh, find that link there, go to our church website, and you'll be able to find this uh, outline. And I hope that you'll follow along with it. Hope it'll be an encouragement and a help to you uh, because a lot of people are struggling financially right now, or if not right now, maybe in the future, and it may help you to be prepared for it. So uh, get the notes, download those, and be prepared to uh, do the study with us. Been really excited about how God has been blessing too. And uh, we have a record enrollment at our school this year and several people who have recently called. And so it's just an exciting thing to see what God is doing. Uh, daycare is doing well. This last Sunday, we were able to observe Lord's Supper with our church family at our two morning services. And that was exciting too. And we are preparing for midweek services to start up again in just a couple of weeks. So I hope that in just a few moments, you'll note some of the announcements. I'm really excited about how God is blessing. And I want you to be praying for our church family be praying for each other, be praying for our missionaries as well. Uh, and every bit as much as coronavirus has been affecting us, guess what? It's also been affecting our missionaries and church friends and church planters and stuff all over the world. Uh, so let's make sure that we stand for Christ and we uh, relate to him. There is a prayer sheet. If you haven't gotten it yet, we are praying that God will help us to be consecrated to him in the month of August. And you can get a copy of that form uh, prayer sheet on our website. And also it's shown up there uh, on our church uh, Facebook page uh, as well. But let's make sure that we pray. In fact, let's do that right now. And as you're coming online, you may see some other people that are on there, whether you know them or not. Well, let me say, first of all, welcome guests. And thank you, church family, for being online. And you can say hello to each other. And we look forward to how God will bless and work in all of our lives together. But let me have a word of prayer with you. After we're done praying, then we'll give you some announcements, and then we'll jump into our study. So hopefully by then you'll have the outline, your Bible, and a pen. And we'll just have a great time in God's Word studying this surviving a financial crunch. But let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can come together. And it's been a very unique and different time during coronavirus, but we know that you have great things in store. Lord, help us to trust you and to follow you. We wanna praise you for the great things that you have done, even in the midst of uh, the struggles that we have had, the challenges that we have faced. Uh, There's so many things that we could list. And even right now, as I'm praying, I'm thinking of some different church folks who are going through some struggles uh, financially or relationally, uh, health-wise, uh, just so many things. But Lord, we lift those burdens to you. And we know that you care. We know that you love us, that you are going to take care of those problems and situations. Lord, in our struggles, help us to trust you. Lord, help us to rely upon you and help us to cast all of our care upon you for this reason we know that you care. Lord, we thank you for caring for us and for loving us. We wanna praise you for the great services that we've had recently and the many who've been coming to church, those who are watching online, and uh, we honor you now. And we are so thankful for your faithfulness in our lives and for saving us and giving us an opportunity to share the great gospel of Jesus Christ with others. Lord, we love you. We ask this in Jesus' name, 
Amen. Well, in just a few moments, we're going to show you a few announcements. Pay attention to those, and then we'll be prepared. And again, welcome those who are coming online. Hello to each and every one of you. So uh, good to see you online, I guess you could say, and excited about what God is going to do in just a few moments as we look at stretch number five, surviving a financial crunch. But here's a few announcements before we jump into our study. Thank you for joining us at Open Door Baptist Church. Here are just a few reminders and upcoming events. Each Sunday, children can join us for our King's Kids Children's Church during the 1030 service. Preschool ages can be checked in in our preschool wing. First through sixth graders will be dismissed during the service. We offer a great Bible study for those who would like to begin a relationship with Christ. You can visit start.odbc-church.com to begin. Church family, you can share the link with others. We plan to resume our midweek service, Olympian program, and teen core on Wednesday, September 2nd from 7 to 8 o'clock. There will be a volunteer meeting for Olympians on Sunday, August 23rd at 6 p.m. KMP3 Music Brigade, don't forget our party and last rehearsal date on Saturday, August 29th from 9.30 to noon. The performance will be Sunday, August 30th at 6 p.m. There are several ways to give. You can do so by visiting our website, by texting, or by giving at the door following our services. Sign up online or in the foyer to join us for our annual Christmas Choir kickoff dinner on Thursday, September 3rd at 6 p.m. We will have a wonderful Christmas meal followed by a preview of our Christmas music. We just finished our first week at Open Door Christian Academy. We are still enrolling, so if you are interested or know of someone looking for a good Christian school, contact our office to register or for more information. All right, open your Bibles to Proverbs 16.8. We're jumping into this lesson, stretch number five in our stretch series, Surviving the Strenuous. And who hasn't gone through something strenuous recently, right? Uh, but we look here at stretch five, surviving a financial crunch. And if there's one thing that Americans are used to over this last decade uh, or a little bit longer is the fact that there are things that come up that cause financial crunches. And we need to be prepared for those. Coronavirus is one of those times that surviving a, corona, uh, uh, sorry, a financial crunch is a very strenuous thing uh, if we are not prepared. And even if we are prepared, it can add an element of stress uh, to our lives. So we want to make sure that we are stretching ourselves and we are trusting God for what his word says and the outcomes, and we can prepare for such things. Now, we look at Proverbs 16, and it provides to us um, along with a myriad of other verses. And by the way, let me just kind of say this before we even get started. There's a lot that I could put into your outline. And you may be looking at the outline right now thinking, man, there's a lot of notes. We're going to go through this very quickly. Um, and there's a lot more that I could say about finances and would love to. Um, but for the sake of time, we're just going to go through this. And I hope it'll be a blessing to you really looking at this theme of surviving a financial crunch. Hope it'll be a help to you uh, because I, I think there are many people that are struggling financially right now in the midst of other th struggles that they have. But Proverbs 16, 8 says this, better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. The principle is this, while everybody wants to have money, right? Who wouldn't want to have more? We need to remember that money is not everything. Your goal in life is not finances. Your goal is to glorify God. But it does remind us better is a little with righteousness. So if you're going to live righteously and do the right thing, it's better to live righteously and not have much than it is to not live righteously and have much. It really is the comparison. So we look at the scripture and it reminds us about keeping our perspective correct based upon the word of God when it comes to finances. Now, we think about in the introduction there, money, money, what is money? Money is something generally accepted as a medium of exchange, a measure of value, or a means of payment. We all know what money is. Uh, money is something you may have in your wallet, maybe in cash form, and now there's even digital money, and some of you may have gotten some of these other cryptocurrencies as well, but there's different uh, forms of money that are available. American money versus other monies that are available in the world as well. Debt, what is debt? Well, debt is something that is owed, not generally something that's good, and a debt is an obligation, meaning this, it's a state of owing something to somebody else. Now, I don't know if you're like me or not, but I don't really like owing other people things, um, but it is an important principle that we learn when it comes to financial crunches. So here's the first paragraph there. It says this, a common misnomer is that money is the root 
of evil. By the way, it's not money. Money is not the root of all evil, but the Bible shows us in 1 Timothy 6.10, what? This truth, the love of money is the root of all evil. So let me remind you about that because so many people say, oh, money is a terrible thing. No, money is like neutral. Uh, money is something that you need in order to be able to exchange. It's kind of like air. And uh, you need to have money and you need to use money wisely. Uh, but the love of money is what gets people into trouble. It seems that people, including Christians, seek after money to help them get things. And that's a caution. If our heart is more on the things of this world than the things of heaven, too often Christians seek personal gain first rather than God's kingdom, causing them to live outside their means. So that means extending credit or trying to get things before we have saved up money, perhaps, et cetera, et cetera. Others seem to be, quote unquote, cursed, if you ever felt this way, with bad luck. And it seems like they can never get ahead financially. Some of the principles we'll look at tonight uh, or in this study will encourage you there too. So whatever state one's finances are in, there are some general principles that will help a Christian survive a financial crunch. And let me just mention this too. These aren't principles just for Christians. Uh, they are spiritual. They're biblical principles. And they'll apply to anybody, even if they're uh, a lost person, they don't know Christ. But uh, we look at this, and when it comes to being a Christian, these are principles that we should believe. And as Christians, we have a higher better responsibility to make sure that we follow them with our lives. So we need to remember that God does not promise us great prosperity, which is a popular false gospel, uh, this prosperity gospel that's been trumped up so many different ways. So be, based off of these things, let's understand this. We need to let us study or let this study serve as a reminder of how a Christian ought to approach finances. And as we think about the crunch, like we're going through many people during coronavirus, let's make sure that we put some good sound principles in our lives. So again, I'm gonna go through this quickly. And if you have any questions, if you need some help financially, uh, I'd love to be able to be an encouragement and a help to you. And by the way, I do have some different counseling times and scheduled times. And if you want to, maybe you're long distance or because of corona things, um, let me know, and guess what? We can make a phone call, or we can FaceTime, or something like that. Uh, if you want to come, we, I'd love to be able to meet with you and be an encouragement with you uh, to you as well. But let's look at a few things. So when it comes to surviving a financial crunch, again, I'm going to go quickly, so keep your listening ears on, and to have your fingers ready to flip through your Bible and take some notes. So the first thing is this, is keep the right perspective of your finances. If you don't keep the right perspective of your finances, your finances are going to uh, get a hold of you. So we look at the Bible, Proverbs 16, and I want to note verses, uh, sorry, Proverbs 18, verses 11 and 12. It says here, the rich man's wealth is his strong city, and as in a high wall in his own conceit, before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty, and before honor is humility. So we need to keep the right perspective of our finances. Here, what he's saying in the first part is that a rich man's wealth is a strong city. Uh, it's He feels secure. And we talk about financial security, and we can have an element of financial security, but if there's anything like the stock market, the stock market crashes, and uh, you look at many other countries as well that have had uh, high inflation rates, and money is constantly changing value. And honestly, money can change at any given moment based off of circumstances that are going on. So we learn here to keep a right perspective about our finances. How do we do that? Letter A, honor the Lord. We must always honor God in everything that we do. I hope that is your number one principle in life, to glorify and to honor God with your life. Proverbs 3, 9 shows us this, honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first fruits, or with the first fruits of all thine increase. We need to honor God with all that we have. And he mentions here, we need to honor God with our substance and with the first fruits. That means the very first part of it. Uh, let me mention to you 2 Corinthians 9, 7, this New Testament principle. It says, every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give. How? Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So we need to be prepared to honor God in our finances. Sometimes we look at the final fi uh, financial crunches that we get in, the stress that we have, and we need to learn to honor God first with all that goes on. So how do we do that? Number one, give tithes and offerings. Give tithes and offerings. Malachi 3.8 is still in the Bible. Will a man rob God? And it's a good question. The God says, yet ye have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? And the answer that God gives is in tithes and offerings. So give tithes and 
offerings. We look at this, a very important thing to do. You should be giving through your local church and assembly that you attend uh, and make sure that you give financially to it. Uh, we look at Mark 12, 42 to 43. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have caught, uh, ca sorry, than all they which have cast into the treasury. Uh, and by the way, I just thought I'd bring this along. I don't have many opportunities to show it to people, but this is an example of a widow's mite. You may not be able to see it uh, very well, but this is the oldest coin that I have, and it's somewhere from between 100 BC and 60 AD, but it's a uh, uh, widow's mite that was given to me. I'm really excited about it. You say, how much is a widow's mite worth? Well, it's probably worth like uh, maybe today, you can maybe compare it like two pennies, if you will, something like that. Uh, just to, in fact, if you were to look at it, uh, this widow's mite is smaller than a penny, and uh, so when it comes to value, it's not worth a whole lot. But that's the principle, one of the principles that Jesus was trying to express is that here, this lady cast in all that she had. And so we need to make sure that we give to God. Secondly, we need to notice God's blessings. When we are giving, when we honor God with our lives, when we manage our fi finances well, guess what's going to happen? We're, we need to be looking and noticing God's blessings that he has given to us. Proverbs 3.10, we were just looking at Proverbs 3.9 a moment ago, and uh, it says there, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Guess what? As we do give, guess what? God blesses us. And let me remind you, it's not always that he blesses us in the same way that we give, so sometimes we expect he's gonna to give to us financially, but God blesses other ways as well. So let me remind you to honor the Lord. Secondly, earn and receive money honorably. In Exodus 20, in verse 15, of course, you know the verse, thou shalt not steal. Now, I can give you a lot of other verses and remind you about the importance of earning and receiving money honorably. Don't steal uh, don't cheat your boss out of it, uh, but make sure that in your life that you receive, earn, and then also receive money in an honorable way. So we're, again, we're talking about how to keeping a right perspective of our finances. Letter C uh, there, number three, if you will, remember other people. When it comes to honoring God, guess what? One of the reasons why, uh, if you will, you have two pennies to be able to rub, to get, rub together uh, is for this, is to remember other people. What are you supposed to do as you remember other people? Uh, think about what they have and what you want. No, 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 that's not the perspective. But we need to, number one, meet needs. If you see somebody else that has a need in their life, it is a biblical responsibility for us when we have the ability to be able to do so, if God has so blessed you, to be able to give and to be able to help. Uh, we look at the scripture in Leviticus 19.9. Here's the principle. And when you reap the harvest field of your land, so if you had a field and you had a crop, what are you supposed to do? Thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of the field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. So in this principle, what it was is it was ancient welfare, if you will, in the sense that it was God providing through farmers, uh, which was an agricultural society, to leave some food for other people that were there. Uh, so not to really glean everything, but to leave some for other people to be able to come and to be able to earn or to be able to gather for their lives too. Uh, 1 John 3, 17, New Testament principle, but whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? It's like, hey, how can you be a Christian? How can you name the name of Christ and you don't want to uh, be a help to other people? So meet needs. Number two, here's another way to remember others, is to leave an inheritance. And sometimes we think, oh man, my finances are such in shambles. I, I don't know that I can afford next week groceries, let alone uh, provide an inheritance for the future. But that ought to be one of the desires of our heart, to leave an inheritance for others, perhaps for your children. In Proverbs 13, 22, it takes it a step farther from that. And it says, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. That means to his grandchildren. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Now, let me also remind you about that when it comes to an inheritance in providing spiritually. Uh, some people like to leave an inheritance for their church family uh, or for uh, their church congregation as well. Sometimes they do with uh, life insurance or other things there too. But let's remember others and continue to invest in other people who will live past us and invest in gospel work too. Letter D, prevent debt. If you're going to keep the right perspective of your finances, you need to prevent debt. We're talking about finances, not debt. Which one's better, to have finances or to have debt? 
obviously, to have finances. So Scripture shows us in Proverbs 22, verse 7, first of all, the, the rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. So we ought not to enjoy being in debt and owing other people things. Uh, that's one principle. Verse 26 follows it and says, Be not thou one of them that strikes hands or of them that are sureties for debts. What does that mean? Somebody that was a surety for a debt is this. Somebody comes along and says, hey, I'm trying to get a loan. Would you co-sign with me? That's a dangerous thing to do. We'd be very, very careful about these uh, personal types of notes uh, or loans or even corporate loans, company loans sometimes where we are a personal assurance for them. Uh, debt will control part of your finances or all of it, depending on how much de debt you may have. So the principle is this, and you may have heard it before, but you need to tell your money where to go Otherwise, your money will tell you where to go. So be careful about how you use your money and prevent debt. Assume any loans, if necessary, are yours uh, as well. So if you're saying, hey, I'm going to co-sign, they're going to take care of it, and it won't be a big deal to me. It may not be, but many times I have seen uh, even Christians get in arguments about co-sign notes and loans, those types of things. So be very, very careful with that. I recommend, the Bible recommends, God recommends that you don't get involved with that. Uh, but additionally, don't loan if you cannot afford it. So somebody says, hey, can you lend me some money? Uh, if you're not willing to part with that money, then I recommend not even giving it. Uh, but it's better to give, simply to uh, not say that you shouldn't put some teeth in what you're giving, depending on the circumstances, but it is a whole lot better to give and to be willing to give uh, than to get into the loan uh, shark process. So uh, prevent debt. Okay, here's a couple of other things too. We talked about keeping the right perspective of your finances. Again, I can mention a lot of things about it. Number two there is learn to be content. Content. And uh, you're sitting there right now, I want you to say that word content. Ready? Content. Contentment is so important. Uh, Philippians 4.11, the Apostle Paul says, not that, I speak in respect, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be, there's a word, content. We need to learn to be content. Uh, contentment is the opposite of greed and covetousness. So how do we do that? Well, letter A, seek God's kingdom. Seek God's kingdom, Matthew 6, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, I'm gonna march through that passage, Matthew 6, generally, and I'm gonna show you a few principles about seeking God's kingdom. Now, these are kingdom principles, and they will help you to uh, avoid covetousness and to seek God's kingdom first. How do we do that? Number one, acknowledge God and your part in it. Matthew 6, 9 says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So acknowledge God, and by the way, you're recognizing your part in that kingdom. Number two, pray that you can build it. It is one of your responsibilities as God's child to build his kingdom on his behalf. Matthew 6, 10 says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. So we recognize our part in it and we have an opportunity. We need to be praying that God will help us to build it. And part of the way that we do that is through the temporal resources, including finances that we have. Number three, recognize your provisions come from it. What God blesses you with comes from him. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from God. Matthew 6, 11, we have this prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Now, while Americans usually don't have to live hand to fist, um, or hand to mouth rather, um, we recognize that God blesses us and we recognize that God gives us the things that we have. Recognize your provisions come from God's kingdom. Number four, make deposits into it. It's an amazing thing to be able to invest in God's kingdom. How do we do that? Matthew 6, 19 and 20. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. A whole lot better place to invest is in heaven. Amen? So let me encourage you to do that and to make deposits into your heavenly treasure, God's heavenly treasure, and invest it there. Um, number five. Keep your heart in it. Keep your heart in it. I like this verse. Uh, when it comes to keeping our heart in it, you know that when you have your heart in something, you're going to long for it more, right? So Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, guess what? There will your heart be also. So there's the principle. You're investing in spiritual things. You're investing in heaven. The more you invest in heaven, 
guess what's going to happen? The more your heart's going to be there, and you're not going to be longing for the things of this world. Number five, sorry, we just did that one. Number six, serve for it. Matthew 6, 24, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. You say, what in the world is man? Money. You can't serve God and serve money. So we have to use our money in order to be able to serve God. So we need to serve God or serve for God's kingdom with the things that he has given to us, including money. And then number seven, trust in it. Trust in it. If you live for God's kingdom, guess what's gonna happen? Your stress is gonna go way, way down, no matter what's going on in this world. Uh, America is not promised to be a first world nation, if you will. America could become a second world, a third world nation uh, over time. And we start to look at prophecies in the future, and it's, it's possible. Do we want that to happen? Absolutely not. But when it comes to focusing on God, focusing on our stuff, let's make sure that we keep our perspective on him and remember who he is, what he's going to do. So let's trust in, not our money, trust in God's kingdom, Matthew 6, 25. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Good questions. We need to trust God and follow him. So let's trust God and uh, trust in God's kingdom. Second thing there, letter B, is see, that, see the blessings that cannot be bought. Sometimes in life we get so focused on, oh, so-and-so got a new car, this person got a new house, this person got a new job. This, you know, there's all these things in life that we seemingly want. Person got a gun, I, I like their fishing rod. There's so much that we could be jealous and envious and covetousness, uh, covetous about, right? But we need to see the blessings that truly cannot be bought. And by the way, God gives us blessings every day. Let's learn to recognize those. Psalm 68, 19 says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits. Even the God of our salvation, Selah. You say, what's that, Selah? It means pause. Think about what we just sang or what we just said right there. And some people think Selah means to repeat. So think about it. Read that over and over and over again. Remind yourself that it's important to see the blessings that cannot be bought. What about your family? Uh, let's think about the blessing of your church. Think about the blessing of God's word, the blessing of the health that God's given to you, the years that you have, the education that God's giving. Let's thank God for the blessings that he has given to us that cannot be bought. Thirdly, prepare for the future. Here's a principle. Uh, if you're going to honor God with your finances, you're gonna survive a financial crunch. Foundationally, we need to prepare for the future. Um, and by the way, if you haven't prepared for the future and now you're in a financial crunch, you're probably in a worse financial crunch because you didn't take the step, right? Uh, you didn't prepare for the future. It's an important thing to prepare for the future before the future gets here. Uh, and so that's an important principle to learn. Uh, in the word of God, and uh, I'm, not, I'm just gonna mention this to you, Genesis 41, we see the example of Joseph and how he was in the land of Egypt. And God used Joseph to provide wisdom for the people of Egypt in order to provide food after seven years of great uh, harvest, and then there's gonna be seven years of famine. And so Joseph led the people of Egypt to be able to set aside food for the future. Now we see several times in the Bible uh, this principle. So, um, Proverbs 6, 8 uh, shows this. Uh, and it tells us over there to make sure that we uh, set aside things for the future. Um, let's see if I can find it here in my notes. Here we go, Proverbs 6, 8. Uh, what does the ant do? It provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. So there's a principle there that we, pre that we prepare early. Uh, we also look at Psalm, uh, sorry, Proverbs 10, verse 5. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. Okay, and uh, Proverbs 20 and verse number four also shows us this principle. The rich ruleth over the poor and the poor is, and the borrow is servant to the lender. So we can see these principles time and again um, uh, in our lives. So as we think about uh, these, I'm sorry, I think the verse, Proverbs 20 verse four, the slugger would not plow by reason of the cold, therefore shall he beg in the harvest and have nothing. That's Proverbs 20 and verse number four, verse four. So prepare for the future. And then, Roman numeral four, I'm gonna give you one verse and we're gonna go through a bunch of points, okay? Uh, and is this, have a plan to get back into the black. You say, what is the black? Well, this is a uh, budgeting principle, financial principle, and if you have a spreadsheet, you'll notice this sometimes. Uh, but talking about getting into the black, this is the idea, uh, kind of getting above the line so you're not in debt. 
And anytime you go below the line and you're in debt, you go out of the black into a period or a region that's referenced or the idea is going into the red. You really don't want to be in the red uh, and to be in debt. So how can you get back into the black, out of the red area, back into the black, and to uh, take care of your finances that way? So how do you do this? Well, here's a few things to think of. Proverbs 22, 7 says, the rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrow borrower is servant to the lender. And uh, we noted that uh, verse and that concept just a moment ago. But here's a few things to think about, okay? Based off of that idea, letter A, signs of financial trouble. How do you know that your finances are getting into trouble? Uh, the, frankly, some people going through a coronavirus or general times in life, these are some indicators that uh, things may not be so good or there's some things that you probably need to do to address your finances. So signs of financial trouble, number one, when the temptation is to pay bills rather than to give to God. When the temptation is to pay bills rather than to give to God. If you're going to church and you think, oh man, I really have these bills to pay, ah, I just can't give today, that's a temptation in your life that you're, you know, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. We ought to be willing and ought to be giving to God before anything or anybody else. So if you're tempted to pay your bills, and hopefully you're not, uh, before you pay God, then uh, there's some problems there. Number two, 20% or more of your income is needed to pay accumulated debts. So you start to think about how much money you're bringing in. If you are using more than 20% of your income to pay accumulated debts, uh, example, if you got more than 20% of your income in credit cards uh, or uh, consumer loans, those types of things, it's gonna be very, very difficult for you to be able to meet your other financial obligations. And if you're getting over that 20%, because they say that some Americans have about 20%, uh, of finances that are available. Well, if your finances are being caught up in loans and in debt, then the problem is going to be you're not going to have extra money for other things. Uh, now, let me include, remind you that when I'm talking about that is not typically a mortgage, and uh, I can explain that to you some other time, but we think about 20% 20 20 or more of income is need to pay accumulated debts, okay? So, um, uh, but uh, that's for like consumer loans, those types of things. Number three, debts continue to grow. If you are not paying off your debts in such a way that you are getting ahead and your loans keep on growing, then it's probably a sign, one of the early signs of financial trouble. Uh, number four, requesting to stretch out payments or payoffs. If you're calling your uh, loan broker or you're calling your credit card company on a pretty regular basis, you say, hey, can I stretch these out uh, a little bit longer? Then that may be an indication that uh, there's some flags here. We got some financial troubles to consider. Number five then is bills seem to go unpaid each month. If you're looking at your bills and you're thinking, oh, I can't pay this one this month, and maybe you have to call a credit or you're paying it partially, but you're not paying the whole thing, then it's probably an indicator that yes, it's a sign of some financial trouble. So these are some general indicators, and I hope that you'll look at these indicators and try to examine your own finances uh, as well. So some signs of financial trouble, and then finally, some ways to get out of debt. Okay, so some of you are kind of waiting, so what do I do about this? Well, here's a few things that you can do. Number one, and this is gonna be very practical, it's gonna take a little bit of time for you to do, much longer than what I'm saying right now, uh, but here's a few things that you can do. Number one, list all of your debts. So take all of your, um, uh, the, the sheets that you get, and of course I know a lot of them come electronically nowadays, put them all next to each other, write them in a notebook, do something, put all those things together, make a spreadsheet, or use a computer program, do something, but list all of your debts. Uh, I owe the credit card company this, or I owe my second credit card company this, or I've got a loan for this, or whatever the case is, list all of the debts that you have. Now on there, you can also include things such as mortgage and car payment and so on and so forth. Number two, if you're gonna dig out of debt, you need to list all your debts and then do not make any credit purchases. If you're already in debt, don't make foolish decisions to get a credit card, keep on extending your credit, and keep on spending money. That's a foolish thing to do at that moment in time. Um, and uh, so make sure you do not make any credit purchases. Then number three, 
Go to a cash system for daily expenses. Like, what? I'm going to use cash? Yes, you'd use cash. Of course, um, uh, sometimes it's a little bit hard. I notice that coronavirus has affected a few things. Sometimes you go places like exact change only. We don't have any change in coins and stuff like that. Uh, one of the unique things that has happened during coronavirus, I have some thoughts about the, some of that stuff too, but uh, go to a cash system, if at all possible. Some people call it the envelope system, and you take all your money and you break it up into envelopes, and in that way you say, okay, I've got X number of dollars for my groceries, I got X number of dollars for my car payment, got X number of dollars for, uh, to catch up on debt, I got X number of dollars for uh, gifts to buy, and you create an envelope. So you take money and you break it up, you go to the bank from your check or whatever it is, and you take the cash, you put it in your envelopes, and that's what you're going to spend on those things. So when it comes to groceries, guess what? You pull out your money from your grocery envelope, and that's the money you have for groceries. Uh, so uh, go to a cash system for daily expenses. The number four, pay off the smallest debts first. This is not a new idea to me. Uh, people have been talking about this for years. Uh, I think Dave Ram Ramsey talks about it, uh, the snowball system, other people reference it different ways. Uh, but if you have a credit card, this is what happens. Or several credit cards or several debts, what you do is you take the smallest one, maybe it's $150, pay it off, and then this is what happens. The money that you were putting toward that debt each month, what you do is you take it, and then you start applying it to start paying off some of your other debts. So you start with the smallest ones first. I know sometimes you're like, man, I need to pay off the biggest ones first. No, no, don't do that. Start with the smallest ones first and then deal with those, and then it'll give you more money to snowball and to be able to pay off your larger debts faster over time. Uh, so let me encourage you to uh, do that as well. So that was number four. Number five, communicate with lenders. If you do have financial issues, go to your lenders and say, hey, I got some problems. Okay, so deal with them. And number six, sell unnecessary items to pay debts. If you got some things that you can sell, do a garage sale, do something, if you've got a car and nobody's driving it, sell it, but try to sell some things that are unnecessary to pay off those debts. He's just trying to give you some ideas. How do you get back into the black? Uh, number seven, reduce expenses. Sometimes we think, oh, there's no way I can do without. Well, start thinking about some of the things that you could deal without. Um, and uh, it may be dealing or not having cable television for a little while or satellite. Um, it may be, mean not having internet. It may mean not having a cell phone. I don't know. There's different things that you may have to cut, um, excuse me, or to be able to reduce. Or start shopping around for different pricing for some different things. Be wise when it comes to going and buying gas. Some people pull into any gas station that they want to, but, you know, a little a few cents here is a few cents there uh, when it comes to buying cheaper gas uh, at the gas station. But reduce your expenses as best as possible. Number eight, get an additional part-time job. If you're able to do this, this can really be a big help. And trying to get another job to be able to pay for uh, different things that you've got. Um, uh, again, when I mentioned this is, uh, if it's possible to do, uh, then do that. Uh, you know, you start to think about, okay, I need to do this, that. If for some reason you're coming down, you're like, there's no more changes that we can make, but there's more money going out, then there's other lifestyle style changes that you need to uh, look at to be able to make the proper adjustments to get your finances back in order. And then, of course, number nine, which probably should be number one, pray for God's help. You need to pray for God's help. If you need blessings on your finances, guess who's going to help you? God's going to help you. And by the way, as you take these steps, they are steps of obedience in honoring God with your finances. And so finances are an important part because finances really tie up a lot of our life. So pray for God's help, and guess what? He is going to help you. Now, does that mean shh, tomorrow it's going to be all taken care of? No. It oftentimes takes years and years and years for some people to get out of their financial crunches. So be patient and wait, but be faithful and content, and God will help you. And then the final thing is this. Number five, establish a workable budget. You've got to have a budget. Okay, as kindly as I can say it, it's an important thing. And by the way, a budget is a guideline. It's not like set in the stone. Um, but as much as possible, you need to have a budget to guide you into making good financial decisions. Again, we can see this in the Word of God. It's an important thing to plan ahead. Letter A, a simplified budget. Say, how simple can it be? Uh, usually, I like to itemize everything, oftentimes to the penny, okay? Uh, but that's just kind of the way that I am. But when it comes to simplified budget, number one, give 10% to the Lord's work. So if you have a budget, you got some income, guess what? 10% of it, first of all, foremost, goes to God. Secondly, uh, so that's number one, give 10. Secondly is save 10. 
So we, again, we talked about surviving a financial crunch. You've got to set something aside for the future. And I want to encourage you to save 10%. Now, if you're trying to get out of a financial crunch, it's probably best for you to use most, if not all, that 10% in order to start investing, if you will, to pay down those debts uh, until you start getting ahead again. Um, but, uh, and then number three, live on the other 80%. Live on the other 80% or what is left, okay? So the other 80%. Give 10, save 10, and then live off of the other 80%. And that will be a great guideline for you. So if you're not able to live off of that 80%, then you might have to start looking at some other lifestyle changes. Uh, can you afford that uh, $1 million home? Well, probably looking at your 80%, uh, percent, that's not where the average American is going to be. Okay, so let's live realistically and uh, focus properly on our finances. So establish, you see the point there, and a workable budget, not an impossible budget, establish a workable budget. And then finally, let her be there an expanded budget process. Let me just tell you how to do this. Because frankly, I've talked to a lot of people who are like, I don't know how to make a budget. So how do you do that? Number one, list all expenses and compare them with income. Now, earlier we talked about looking at all of your debts that you have. Well, look at all your expenses here, which debts are part of your expenses. Um, but look, your water bill, your phone bill, your cable bill, your internet bill, your food bill, you name it. List everything that you spend money on and uh, look at all that and list all of your expenses and then ex compare them to your income. Which one is bigger, your income or your expenses? And number two, if necessary, seek to reduce expenses and or increase income to balance your financial goals. So which one is bigger, your income or your expenses? And hopefully your income is more than your expenses. And if they're the exact same, which I don't think I've ever seen them the exact same, uh, then you can try to deal with it there. But you want to try to increase your income uh, or decrease your expenses as necessary to be able to get them to balance. So balance is that important thing. Proverbs 11, 1, a uh, great important principle there. Number three, always plan to give to God. Did you catch that? Always plan to give to God. Let me, let me ask you this question. When it comes to working on your finances, who is in charge of blessing you? God is. And so let me remind you, let's honor God first and foremost in our lives. And you know what's going to happen? You'll be amazed. Uh, God will bless you. God will take care of you. And it is a faith principle. And we know this, that uh, if you will, that when you give, example, 10% to God, and I know many people who give much more than 10% to God. And it's a great and a blessed spot to be able to be in life if you're able to do that. But if you give to God first, you know what God's going to do? Think about it. Your credit card company is not going to help you pay all your other bills. They're just going to get in more debt that way. But God will help you to pay off your debts. God will help you to be able to get ahead in different ways. So always plan to give to God. And then, finally, number four, set reasonable amounts. Set reasonable amounts. Uh, example, sometimes you say, oh, I can get away with $5 of gas every week. And some people may. If you only have to drive across the street to go to work, that may be a possibility. But $5 of gas every week, that is not going to get you very far. Uh, so make sure that you set reasonable amounts for your budget, um, because sometimes people like to fudge their budgets by uh, not putting realistic numbers in their budget. So let's make sure that you budget properly and account for your money wisely, making your budget as accurate as possible, and try to be honest about it. So allow yourself to live within your financial means. And that's the important principle. Allow yourself to live within the financial means that God has blessed you with. And if you need to make some changes, don't be afraid to make those changes. Increasing your income, perhaps a, a, a different job, uh, or an extra part-time job, I don't know, uh, or decreasing your expenses is another way to do that. Uh, there's some different things that we can do uh, that uh, perhaps reducing your expenses, uh, changing service providers, changing the location of your house. I don't know, there's different things that we could do, but set reasonable amounts, allowing yourself to live within your financial means. Very, very important. We start to think about living in the midst of a financial crunch. And some of you are watching right now, you think, yep, I'm living in a financial crunch. My prayer is that God will help you to give you wisdom and to give you the patience to dig out of that financial crunch. Some of you are in a financial crunch because of coronavirus. Some of you are in a financial crunch because of things way before uh, coronavirus. Wherever you're at, I want to pray for you in just a moment. I want to encourage you that it is possible to get out of debt. It is possible to survive a financial crunch and to make good decisions for the future 
as well. And I want to encourage you to encourage other people who are also going through the financial crunches that they're going through uh, to find strength and help in God and his wisdom. But let's have a word of prayer. I want to pray for you that God will help you. Lord, I thank you that we can come to your word. I thank you that you can give to us wisdom in dealing with the financial crunches that we go through. Lord, there are some who are watching right now, and I ask that you would help them to hear this truth, that you love them, that you care about them. Number one, we know this. There was a sin debt that we couldn't pay, and you paid for it for us. Because of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross of Calvary, we know that he provided salvation for us. He paid that sin debt. We thank you for that. Lord, for those who are watching, they don't know Christ as Savior, we ask that you would help them to realize that there's a bigger debt than finances, and that's their sin debt. Lord, help them to find salvation in you. Lord, for anybody that's watching, maybe they're going through a financial stress, a financially stressful time, Lord, give them wisdom, give them help that they need. Help them to see these truths from your word, or help them to find help if they need it as well, to find a financial counselor or somebody that can encourage them. Lord, even as we're praying, that you would encourage them to take the steps to be faithful and to go through the time that's necessary in order to dig out the financial uh, stress and situations that they're going through. Lord, we love you. We want to thank you for the wisdom that you provide to give us hope for the future. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, excited about what God's doing. Thank you so much for watching. Looking forward to this coming Sunday service as well. We're going to be looking at the blessed hope. We looked at the Bible, then there was the blood this last Sunday, and the blessed hope this coming Sunday. And I hope that you'll be there or watch online to see what it is that God has for you. Well, God bless you. We'll see you very, very soon.